Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 3 from the May 2008 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so they start off by telling us Smith and Wheaton, separate sole traders, agree to close their individual businesses and form a partnership. They named the business Smith and Wheaton Limited. It was located on Wheaton's premises using his assets. Okay, so what else are they telling us? Wheaton brought to the new business the following assets. Cash, 10,000. Fixtures, 15. Equipment, 25. Land and buildings, 40. And Smith sold his assets and brought to the new business cash of $100,000. First thing we are required to do is to prepare opening journal entries to show the capitals of the partners on Jan 1, 2007. Okay, let's pull up our general journal. Right, so I've done a bit of a scaled down general journal, so you're not going to see a date column or a folio column. I will put in DR for debit and CR for credit, just to help us out a little bit. But what do we do? So when you're recording the opening entries, the partners are bringing in their capital and they're bringing in assets, right? That's what they're contributing. Any resource the owner puts in is capital, but the capital can either provide money to buy assets or be assets itself. And of course, when assets are coming in, the asset values or balances are increasing. And to record increases in assets, we have to debit. Now, we have four assets being brought in by Wheaton. Cash, fixtures, equipment, and land and buildings. So let's put those in. So when you're making general journal entries, you put your debit entries first. Your credit entries come after, and they are indented relative to the credit debit entries. Sorry. So what is the credit entry? Well, capital, because these assets came from Wheaton. So anything the owner puts in is referred to as, or classified rather, as capital. So you're going to see capital, and notice it's indented, right? Capital of Wheaton, 90. Where did I get 90 from? By adding up these individual balances here. And we're going to put a little narration or narrative that says to record capital introduced by Wheaton. Okay, now it also told us that Smith sold his assets and brought to the new business cash of $100,000. Okay, so for Wheaton, we're just going to debit cash, $100,000, and credit capital, $100,000, and the narr narrative or narration, sir, is going to say, to record capital introduced by Smith. Long story short. Okay, let's take a look at part B. Okay, so they give us some information here. After a successful year of trading, the partnership made a net profit of $75,000. The partnership agreement provides the following. So we have a few items here. First, Interest on drawings is to be charged at the rate of 3% per annum. Next, we have capital is to be paid at a rate of 5% per annum. Then we have a salary of 3000 monthly is to be paid to Wheaton. And finally, profits or losses are to be shared equally. Okay, we have a little bit of information down here. Wheaton withdrew 6000 on March 1st, 2007 and Smith withdrew 7000 on September 1st, 2007. Now what we are required to prepare is the partner's profit and loss appropriation account, the appropriation account for the year and the December 31st of seven. Okay, now before we jump into it, I'm gonna put a card up there to my appropriation account video, the partnership appropriation account video, in case you need to, well, one, learn how to do appropriation accounts, two, check out some interesting ways that they could bring the questions, because I go through about 14 different examples there, starting from very simple things to relatively complicated items, okay? So you might want to check that out and then come back here. But let's get into this question. So of course, don't forget to head up your statement. Name of the entity. So it was actually Smith & Wheaton Limited. That's pretty limited, right? Appropriation account, or you could put the full heading profit and loss appropriation account for the year ended. So FYE stands for for the year ended, 31st December 2007. So the first thing we're going to put in is the net profit of $75,000, which we partnered with the question gave us, sorry. Then we're going to add the interest on drawings. Now, this is where it's probably the most complicated part of the question, to be honest, right? So item one told us that interest on drawings is to be charged at a rate of 3% per annum. And they told us in this sentence down here, Wheaton withdrew 6,000 and Smith withdrew 7,000. So do we just find 3% of 6 and 3% of 7,000? No, because they gave us certain dates. What is the significance of the dates? Well, 3% is per annum or per year. That's actually what the question says. It says, literally says per annum, right? Now, if we took out, if Wheaton withdrew 6,000 on March 1st, 2007, 
and the year runs from Jan 1st to December 31st. Now, we are being required, or we have, we have been asked to prepare the appropriation account for the year ended 31st December 2007. So if the year ends on the 31st of December 2007, it started on Jan 1st, 2007. But if we didn't take out the drawings on March 1st, it means the drawing wasn't outstanding for the whole year. It was outstanding for March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and the whole of December as a full 10 months, but not a full 12. So it was not outstanding for the full 12 months, right? It was outstanding for 10. So we are going to have to adjust the interest on the drawings for 10 out of 12 months. Similarly, for Smith, Smith withdrew 7,000 on September 1st. Well, that's even later in the year. So if it was on September 1st, it was outstanding for September, October, November, and December. Only four months out of the whole 12. So we can't just find 3% of each of these amounts because 3% is for an entire year. We have to find the fraction or piece of the year for which the drawings were outstanding and use that to adjust the drawings figure. Let me show you. So for Smith, we're going to find 3% of 7,000. Yes, but then we're going to modify it by multiplying by 4 out of 12. Remember, Smith's drawings were taken out on September 1st, so they were only outstanding for four months, September, October, November, and December. That's why I'm multiplying by 4 out of 12. Well, that actually gives us a straight $70. For Wheaton, it's going to be 3% of 6,000 by 10 out of 12. Why 10? Because remember, Wheaton took out drawings on March the 1st. So March the 1st means March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. A full 10 months out of 12, right? So that's why I have 10 out of 12 here. And that's going to total $220 for the interest on drawings, which we're going to add to the 75 above to get 75,220, which is then going to be appropriated to the partners. Now we're going to start, oh sorry, we're going to continue with the interest on capital, right? So that's going to be a little simpler because that's going to be a straight calculation, right? Interest on capital is to be paid at a rate of 5% per annum. Now the capital balances were 90 to Smith, uh, no sorry, 90 to Wheaton and 100,000 to Smith, right? So we're going to just find 5% of 100,000 for Smith. Because remember, Smith sold all his assets and just brought in the 100,000 in cash. And when we totaled up all of Wheaton's, um, the, the value of all of the assets Wheaton was bringing in, we got 9,000, 98,000, sorry, 5% of which is 4,500. So we are just going to total those two items. And item three in this batch of information tells us that a salary of 3,000 monthly is to be paid to Wheaton. So if it's for the whole year, if we're doing an appropriation account for a whole year, that's 12 months. So if a monthly salary of 3,000 would then scale up to a yearly or annual salary of $36,000, which we'll see here. Salary of Wheaton, 12 by 3,000. Now these are the only two appropriations, so we're gonna pull that out, 45,550, and subtract it from the 75,220, which is gonna leave us with a profit after appropriation of 29,720, which we now have to share. And the question said that profits, sorry, that profits or losses are to be shared equally. So all we have to do to share the profit is simply take that 29,720 and divide by two. And each partner will get an equal share. And when you add it up, you get back exactly what you shared and there's nothing left in the appropriation account. Okay, let's take a look at B part two, which asks us to do the current accounts for the partners. Okay, so the current accounts in a partnership, they record all the partners' earnings and withdrawals. And what we're seeing here is a current account that has a column for Smith and Wheaton on the debit side as well as on the credit side, right? Now you can do individual current accounts, but I find it more time efficient to use a combined current account. And as a matter of fact, the, the question papers over the recent years have been giving you formats to use to put in your solutions. And they've been giving you combined current accounts. I, I do recall one or two where they give you separate current accounts but you need to be able to do combined current accounts if they give you, okay? Now, what goes in a current account? Again, the earnings and withdrawals. What earnings? That's where the appropriation account comes in. The earnings in the appropriation account are the interest on capital, the salary, and your share of profits. As we can see, the interest on capital for Smith was 5,000 and for Wheaton was 4,500. Salary, Wheaton was the only one that got a salary of 36,000 for the year and the profit that was shared was equal 14,860, right? So of course, earnings go on the credit side because this shows the earnings and the earnings of the partners increase their capital and increases their net worth, which requires a credit, 
right? Now, the withdrawals have the opposite effect. They reduce the owner's net worth or capital and hence require debits to be recorded, right? The debits, so, sorry, the earnings, the withdrawals, sorry, were the drawings, which were 7000 and 6000 respectively, and the interest on those drawings of $70 and $150, respectively. Now, all we have to do is balance off to find what the partners have as their current account balances. How do we do that? Well, we add up the items on the credit side, add up the debit items, and then subtract. And we'll do that both for Smith and for Wheaton, right? And we'll get balances carried down of 12790 and 49210 respectively. And when you add up the columns on both sides, you're going to see the total for Smith being the same on the debit and credit side as you will see for Wheaton as well. And then don't forget to bring your balances down, right, on the credit side, which implies that the partners had more earnings than withdrawals and they both had surpluses on their current accounts. Okay, and you know what? That's about it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question three from the May 2008 PUA Paper 2. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PV handles. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.